Uh, order members, uh, Mr. David Michael Veen has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Mr. Alistair, uh, who also tabled a similar question, I will call after Mr. Michael Veen. To ask the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment what plans her department has to support workers affected by the proposed closure of the JTI Gallagher factory. express my sincere sympathy with all those workers who face a very uncertain future over the coming uh, months as a result of JTI's announcement last week. The company has stressed that this decision is in no way a reflection of the manufacturing performance of the local team. Uh, in the meantime, Invest Northern Ireland continues to work closely with the company and with the Department for Employment and Learning to ensure that those employees who may be impacted by the outcome of the consultation are offered good quality advice, help and support at the most appropriate time. Mr. McElveen for supplement. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I, I do appreciate the opportunity to have asked this question today, and I thank the Minister um, for her response. Uh, Minister, despite being cheerleaders for the Tobacco, productive, pr tobacco Products Directive um, in the European Parliament, Sinn Féin locally appear to be uh, absolving all responsibility um, for, the or for the proposed closure of this factory. I wonder in discussions that you have had with the management of JTI um, since this announcement, um, have they given you any indication as to exactly what their reasoning behind um, this proposed closure is? Well, I haven't had the opportunity to speak to senior management as yet, as I indicated to the House uh, earlier on. Um, Stephen Farry and myself hope to uh, be engaged at the Ballymena plant later this year. The management have said that they have various processes that they need to go through and therefore um, they don't want to break uh, protocol. I have had the opportunity, as indeed other executive ministers have, uh, to speak to uh, the uh, senior trade union uh, people since the announcement, but of course I have spoken to management before the announcement. and. Uh, they have uh, indicated two very important areas. First of all, the growth uh, in illegal trade, uh, which has led to a significant contraction uh, in the tobacco market in a number of key countries, most notably uh, in Western Europe. And secondly, he is right to mention the European Union Tobacco Products Directive, which uh, bans the manufacture of all cigarette packs containing fewer than 20 cigarettes and all hand-rolling tobacco pouches of less than 30 grams from May 2016. And the reason for that is because 40% uh, of the plant and machinery uh, at Lisnafillan is concerned with uh, small packages and therefore they cannot uh, deal with these larger packages that have been imposed, uh, the sizes have been imposed uh, from Europe. And the company has regrettably taken the decision to move their production to either Poland or Romania. Now, uh, members will say, and indeed uh, people outside of this house have said, well, Poland and Romania, um, they're in Europe as well. Well, those factories are already equipped uh, with the machinery uh, to be able to deal with those uh, larger sizes, and therefore they do not have to put in the capital investment uh, that would have been needed uh, at Lisnafillan, and so they've decided uh, to move ahead. I call Mr Jim Allister. The Minister doubtless is aware of the huge hole that this news leaves and will leave in the economy in the Balmain area and indeed wider field in manufacturing terms, given the significance of Gallagher's. Looking forward to trying to fill that hole, what assistance can the Minister ensure flows from Invest NI in regard to promoting North Antrim as a site to visit for future FDI potential investors, given that the figures to date are quite disappointing with, I think in the last half dozen years, maybe six visits or thereabouts to North Antrim. How can the minister help break the, what seems to be the Belfast-centric monopoly on new FDI investments? Can't you help in that regard, and will she? 
Of course, the member is aware that I recently was uh, on a Middle Eastern trade delegation with companies from Northern Ireland, one of whom uh, were from North Antrim, uh, Ripebus. And Ripebus have great plans in respect of manufacturing for Ballymena. We will continue uh, to support them in that regard. And that includes going to areas where the member may not feel we should go to, but I make no apologies for going to Saudi Arabia and places like that to try and secure uh, new uh, plans uh, and new programmes uh, for Right Bus. He mentions uh, our relationship with North Antrim and with Ballymena. There have been significant uh, announcements in North Antrim, uh, not just Right Bus, but also Moy Park, which of course, although the announcement was made in Dungannon, has an impact uh, in Upper Ban. Uh, and indeed in Ballymena as well. So there are uh, announcements being made outside of Belfast. I didn't think uh, that the member would join the Sinn Féin course for positive discrimination uh, against Belfast, but there we are. We live and learn every day. Can I call him Sir Paul Frey? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Principal Speaker. Uh, can, I, can I ask the Minister, uh, will she make it a priority, her first objective, to try and persuade the company, uh, JTI, to retain some of those jobs within the site. Uh, we do know that we have a very modern, up-to-date cigar factory, and we also have a fully refurbished uh, research and development uh, depot there that was researching uh, uh, tobacco from all, for all over the world and all the plants all over the world. Will the Minister give this House a reassurance that she will try everything she can uh, to uh, retain some jobs? And also then, to support the subcontractors that have a massive pull uh, within the site itself. Well, I thank the member for that supplementary. First of all, let me say to him that we will be meeting management. I hope certainly that will happen uh, this week. Uh, I've indicated uh, to the unions that I'm more than prepared to go to Geneva to speak to uh, those uh, management in headquarters there, and indeed uh, Japan if necessary, because uh, the, as it happens, actually, the British ambassador to Japan was in uh, Northern Ireland just last week, and he uh, met with our colleague, uh, the Member of Parliament for the area, and uh, it is hoped that he will raise the issue of Lisnafillin uh, with G JTI management uh, when he returns uh, to Japan in the near future. So absolutely, uh, during the consultation period, and there is a little time, uh, we will be meeting with senior management here, but I think it's important to also uh, go to Geneva as well and to speak to management there as well. In relation to the subcontractors and the supply chain, I've asked Invest Northern Ireland uh, to find out um, specifically the impact that this will have on local firms. We know that there are 200 local firms uh, who subcontract are in the supply chain of JT Gall uh, JTI Gallagher's uh, contributing £20 million to the local economy and therefore it is vitally important that we find out the impact that this will have on them as well. Minister, some of the the workers at Gallagher's are some of the most highly skilled uh, that we have in terms of manufacturing uh, and certainly I have been speaking to some other uh, manufacturing firms, uh, major manufacturing firms in recent days and they would obviously have an interest uh, in terms of some of those employees moving forward and finding solutions for them in terms of employment. Can I ask you what engagement you, you have with those firms with the manufacturing industry uh, itself to find resolutions uh, to the problems that these families and these workers face? I think it is important to say that the company uh, has very much placed a, a strong emphasis on uh, creating skills um, within uh, JTI Gallagher's that are transferable uh, and because of that uh, we will be able to hopefully find accommodation for them in other manufacturing uh, companies and, and as Mr Hilditch in his question to me during question time pointed out, we are not just dealing with uh, people in North Antrim, we are dealing with people in uh, South and East Antrim as well and indeed probably further afield. So we will be carrying out a skills audit on all of those employees to find out what their skills are uh, and then we will be uh, in approaching other manufacturing companies to assess what their needs are so that we can match up uh, the skills of the people in Ballymena uh, with the skills that are required across Northern Ireland. And I call Mr Robin Swan. Thank you very much. Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Ministers, I'm sure you're aware the announcement and the closure of Gallagher's came like a death. Um, to the community and I have met with the senior shops church on Friday along with Jim Nicholson 
the main reasons they see for the factory closure is TPD2, the illegal trade, but also the fact when you remove that production from Ballymena, it's also the threat of cheaper labour. I may have picked you up wrong earlier, but I'll stand corrected when you said about the removal or the removal of the production to Romania or Poland. Now, my understanding, the understanding of the shops church, is to remove to, or even to set up the factory in Poland would actually take an extensive rebuild. And if that is this case, is there not a case where JTI are actually breaching European Commission protocols if they've sought state aid? And just to ask, can the minister actually get in contact with her MEPs? I know she said she's going to Geneva to meet the management of JTI, but she, will she also tie in with her MEPs in Brussels as well? Well, I will certainly tie in with any MEP that is prepared to work for the good of uh, the Gallagher staff uh, in Ballymena and elsewhere. Um, certainly, um, some of our MEPs, one in particular, has not been helpful for the future of those Gallagher staff. And uh, I think she should join the dots and realise that what she has engaged in has cost those jobs. In terms of the uh, Poland factory, as I understood it, that factory has the appropriate machinery to actually put forward the 40 gram uh, and 30 gram packages that are, are required under the uh, European Directive as it currently stands. If I'm wrong, I stand corrected, but that was certainly the briefing I was given um, from the senior shop steward. Uh, when he came to see us on Thursday, and certainly that was the message I was getting from uh, M M the MP for the area as well. However, uh, as I say, we are going to meet the management, hopefully before the end of this week, uh, Stephen Farry and myself, and then we'll get complete clarity in relation to those issues. Again, a comment, Sir Sammy Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When Caterpillar closed in Larne, uh, or uh, reduced its workforce in Larne, the Minister gave an undertaking at that stage to work with the company to look at their worldwide operations and find out if there were things which could be moved to Northern Ireland. Thankfully, employment levels are now back at the, the pre-reduction levels. Has she any, had any discussions with JTI to see what operations they have worldwide using, first of all, the facilities and, secondly, the skills of the workforce that could be moved to Northern Ireland to at least create some uh, additional employment um, rather than have the whole place closed? Well, yes, and again, those are the sorts of things we'll be uh, talking to the management about when we have that meeting later on this week, and certainly when we go to Geneva as well. But it was a good model, actually, to go to the parent company and to look to see was there anything else we could do uh, in Northern Ireland for the company, and whether that shared services back offices, for example, which we were able to do uh, with Caterpillar uh, when they moved uh, to a facility in West Belfast. Um, I think that's something that we want to explore, and certainly I know that of those staff that are in Lisnafillin, there are a number of them engaged in research and development. Is there any reason why that couldn't continue, for example? So uh, we will want to have all of those discussions, and I look forward to those discussions happening uh, towards the end of this week and then further into the next months. I'm disappointed at the, the stance the Minister and some in our party have taken um, to peddle company propaganda and to completely ignore the facts that everybody acknowledges exist. By, by, focusing, by focusing on the two issues of illegal trade, by, by solely focusing on the issue of illegal trade and an EU directive and completely ignoring the high cost of energy and other production costs that exist here, do, does the Minister not accept that there are a number of global companies that are reviewing their position here because of those high energy and production costs? And can she outline to the House what steps she has taken um, to reduce those costs to try and retain maximum employment here in, in terms of reducing globalisation transfers out of this? Please. Well, yes, the facts, the facts are always very important uh, in any uh, thing that we come to this House to discuss, and uh, therefore I do want to tell the member that the issue of energy has not come up in any discussions which I have had with this particular company. I accept that there are other companies that have particular issues in relation to energy, and I am working proactively with those companies to give them an answer. But it ill beho behoves the member to raise issue about uh, companies and their costs when the member does all in his power to cause difficulties in relation to energy policy in this House. And then he can't join the dots to know that there are continuing difficulties. Because if, you know, if we're going to help business with their energy costs, somebody has to pay for it. Somebody has to pay for it. And I know that's a problem for Sinn Féin because, like every good socialist, somebody else pays the bill. But somebody has to pay for anything that happens in relation to energy, and that is true. And if the members across the way, in particular the lady that continues, um, well, the member that continues to tut 
tucked in the corner. Somebody has to pay, and that's the difficulty that Sinn Féin has with every single policy initiative they bring forward. And I call Mr. Alvin McGuinness. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, um, and I thank the Minister for her answers, very useful answers, but um, surely it's futile to argue whether it's cheap labour, uh, whether it's the illegal tobacco trade, or, or uh, whether it's the European Directive. The fact is that it's a tragedy for those 900-odd uh, workers who are going to ma be made uh, redundant. W the Minister has about uh, 18 months to two years for the final rundown of the premise at, uh, uh, at List of Ellen. Has the Minister any plans to put in place a, an intensive and extensive programme for both redeployment and retraining of the workers uh, who uh, are presently employed? I, I don't necessarily agree with the member that it's futile to look at the decision as to why uh, JTI Gallagher's have taken uh, the decision to go into 90-day consultation, because it's only by looking at the reasons behind their decision that you can try and deal with what's in front of us, because if there are uh, some reasons there that we can try and deal with, then we may be able to keep some of these employees here in Northern Ireland. So therefore, it is important to look at the reasons behind why they've taken this decision, and that's what I want to explore with them. And then we will be able to move forward and see if there's something that we can specifically do in relation to keeping JTI Gallagher here as, a, as an entity, a very good entity, despite what Sinn Féin would say, a very good company uh, to work for. Um, and to see if we can keep that company here, and if not, what is it we can do to help and support uh, those workers in JTI Gallagher's who have, yes, a period of time. There are many other companies uh, throughout Northern Ireland who announced that they were closing on the Friday and people didn't have a job on a Monday. These people have at least uh, got some time to try and find uh, new opportunities, and we will do all we can to assist them. Thank you. Nicole Massana Lowe. Deputy Principal Speaker, and just to follow on to, uh, from Mr McGuinness' uh, question and the Minister's answer, has she any uh, plans to work with my party colleague, uh, the Minister for Employment and Learning, to see how we can uh, help people reskill or upskill in order for them to seek employment you know, between now and the closure in 2017? Well, I don't know if the member has been in for all of my answers, but I have been referencing the Employment and Learning Minister throughout my answers, where I said that uh, he and I had been asked by the executive to go to Lisnafillan to engage with management and union and staff, and we will do that. And therefore, yes, I do have plans to work with the Employment and Learning Minister.